Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to episode 26 of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica, Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by Mr. David, Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are the Rushed Vibers. I don't think I love that. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to play with that. Anyway, here we are in the studio, the Ludio, because it's our living room studio, um, on this beautiful evening, children sleep, parents up, handling business. How are you? I'm doing well. Are you sure? I am. You almost answered that too fast for me to actually believe that you're doing well. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a longer weekend than, than normal, but it's been a less hectic weekend than normal. Mm-hmm. So we're recording this on Sunday, May 16th. Maybe it's the 16th. 16th. Um, and yeah, just, you know, good long weekend. I was up at 6.37 Saturday and, and Sunday. And, um, you know, the girls had a, had a birthday party to go to Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, it's been relatively low key. So yeah. it's always nice. It is. It it almost felt abnormal. Like I was waiting for something to remind me that I needed to do something. Yeah. And I didn't do anything today. And it was nice. You even made a comment that I've been on the couch all day. Yeah, which you were. I felt like it was you know, there was a slight in there. Um and you tried to to say that there wasn't, but I, I don't know that I believe you. There wasn't any it wasn't an intentional slight. Now, if you had a guilty conscience and thus my comment, you know, activated that guilty conscience, then, you know, maybe there might be something to that. But from my standpoint, I was just saying, you know, when was the last time that you got to spend an entire day on the couch? You know, so it's good for you. It was. Um, as, as a working mom mm-hmm. of two young children uh, who bears a lot of the responsibility for those children. And especially during the, do the most. especially during the week, you know, it's nice for you to have a day where you can kind of, kind of treat yourself. So that's all I was saying. Yeah, I took a nap. I kind of just decided I, I was going to go to sleep. I didn't mean to, but I just fell asleep. And it was nice to know that I didn't have to concern myself with my children because there was another adult to concern themselves with them. And yeah. uh, I woke up and Sally, it's always nice. Sally was gone, so I was like, I guess she's napping. I don't know what Salas was doing, so I just went right back to sleep. <laughs> It was beautiful. It was, it was great. It's what um, Sundays are are designed for, in my opinion. Yeah. So if you're watching and you watched last week, you noticed that I said I was going to get rid of the Easter decorations over my left shoulder, your right. And while I did, I guess whoever put them up didn't realize that the residue would actually stick to the wall. Actually, confession so, time. These are my confessions. So when I did the Valentine's Day ones, the residue stuck to the wall. So I sh- didn't want to tell David. So I strategically went back to the dollar store, which was probably my first mistake, and bought Easter ones and put them on top of the Valentine's Day residue. Because I wasn't prepared to tell him. And my hopes were to get to the dollar store to buy whatever the next season would be to cover them up so that he would, it would just be a continuous cycle of him never realizing that the residue was stained. But if you go back to an episode during the Valentine's season, you will note that the Valentine's decor was smaller. So my residue has gotten <laughs> has gotten bigger as we've progressed throughout um, the holidays. But yeah, I knew this. I'm hoping like a Mr. Clean or a knockoff Mr. Clean magic eraser will handle this. If you have any suggestions on how I can um, or he can or we as a team collective team can remove this residue off of our painted walls and still retain the paint i'd appreciate it put them in the comments what are you drinking uh just a red that we were gifted like a couple of years ago a few years ago who gave it to us i think dave and jess gave it to us not uh, us we have alan. a friend a couple friend named dave and jess the, the alan akovskis yes so um 
I think you're supposed to say her last name first. Biakovsky Allens. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what it is. Just nice. a, a simple red. Nice. I'm drinking Bud Light Platinum, as you can see. Yeah, a basic platinum. My my my, my gateway gateway beverage. So um, <clears throat> we uh, had our first uh, show with our with our new format last week. We're going to return to that this week. Uh, thank you to the two new subscribers that we gained last Welcome. week on YouTube. Hey. Shout out, shout out to y'all. We appreciate you guys. Don't uh, don't be strangers. Don't be shy. Feel free to jump into the comments and and speak your mind. Give us your feedback. Um, me and Jess had actually had a uh, had a bit of a consultation uh, with uh, someone who's in who's in the business um, this this weekend and gave us a lot of great nuggets. A lot of great uh, ideas for how we can kind of make the show better, especially for those of you who are viewing us on YouTube. So in the uh, in the coming weeks, uh, maybe even into our next season, quote unquote, of Rush Vibes, uh, we're very excited about implementing some of those some of those changes and getting a little bit more creative so we can make this a little bit more, um, I don't know, unique, more and more of a unique experience week in, week out. But fantastic experience. Like um, I'm pretty hard to not pat not talking myself up but i'm pretty hard to to impress um but i was i was absolutely blown away and i know you were too because we we talked about it so uh just really excited for the nuggets we got the gems we got um look forward to putting those to work here at rush vibes so with that unless you have something else i think we should take our break and then we'll come back and then we'll we'll get into uh our agenda what is our agenda we're doing a follow up. We're doing a follow up on last week because I have some elaboration. First ever Rush Vibes follow up. Yes. So while we get prepared for that, we're gonna take a break and we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. What's up, Vibe Tribe? It's us. It's us. And we are here with a fun announcement. We've been joking around for a while about just having a sponsor or just putting a commercial into our breaks and here we have one our friends at married and having fun are hosting their very first in touch marriage retreat what, what? we find the timing to be absolutely perfect because we have been talking about relationships and entanglement so why not take this opportunity to reconnect with your spouse and god at this on an extended weekend extended weekend <laughs> to think big with big thinkers. So taking place next month, June 10th to the 13th in Lake Junaluska, North Carolina, right outside Asheville. Beautiful, beautiful place. Awesome, all-inclusive marriage retreat. All your meals are included, lodging at the lovely Lamb Bath Inn, a couple's massage. Ooh, get that tension out. Uh, men and women workshops along with a couple's photo shoot and, of course, a vow renewal. We are so privileged to be a part of this and to be advertising this to you guys. And because you are our subscribers and listeners, you get the opportunity to partake in this opportunity for a mere $450 by using our promo code, Rush Vibes. vibes. So R U S H V I B E S is our promo code. If you go over to marriedandhavingfun.com, you can plug it in and you and your spouse can enjoy this wonderful retreat here in North Carolina and get reconnected with your spouse. And if you search for Married and Having Fun on Instagram, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them in a DM. Uh, they're they're really great. One of our favorite podcasts to listen to, uh, but they're also really responsive and they answer any qu- any and all questions you have. So be sure to to hit them up if you uh, are interested, but you just have a couple of questions that you need to get answered. Yes, or feel free to reach out to one of us. We'll be more than happy to answer no, any reach, questions. Reach out to Jessica. <laughs> reach out to me. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. I have had the pleasure of attending day retreats and overnight women's retreats um, with this organization, and they have been amazing. And I've left feeling better about just my perspective on self and my relationship with God and life. So, if that's what you feel like you and your spouse are needing, please don't hesitate to be a part of this. We hope you'll be there. All right. Well, is that it? That's it. All right, That's cool. all I got. Now let's get back to the show. Peace. All right. We're back. We're back from our break. Back from our break. 
So last week, if oh, we're just you, we're just going right into it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We've already done the banter. Okay. Let's, let's get to it. All right. Let's let's not waste any time, Jess. Um. So let's last get, week, get into it. if you listen to the episode, we discussed. We pretty much talked about relationships, and a lot of it was founded on. Is it non-platonic? What's the word? Or platonic, platonic relationships. I always, I never really know how to use that word properly. But relationships where it's like we're just friends, but we're of the opposite sex, um, and we're all straight. Um, and you know, I listen. Sometimes I get the opportunity to listen back to our episodes and actually hear, you know, the dialogue without you know having some obnoxious tiny human, you know, going blah blah blah, blah in the back. Look, man, stop. So I was listening, I was listening to the episode and I just wanted to click like, and between listening to the episode and, you know, seeing a lot of the responses on our social media, I wanted to clarify some things. One, I'm still not a proponent for, um, extended weekends with big thinking exes. Um, Man, I, I will down. say I did get a DM requesting for applicate, like, how do you apply to be a big thinker? So I have created, oh um, a Google <laughs> survey where you can submit your application. Have to, you really? Yes. And I'm going to share it, um, this week and you can apply, you have to, there are like some, some, some definite thought-provoking questions like your opinions on certain things um also you know your food preferences because if you're going to be my big thinker you have to have a certain caliber of food preference wait a minute wait a minute um, wait, wait hold up what's happening i'm apl- i'm receiving you- applications <laughs> for a big thinker. but you haven't asked me if i'm okay with you having a big thinker i'll ask friend. you once i have a qualified candidate there's no point no. in having the debate if I don't have Wait a qualified a candidate. And you <laughs> actually you like, actually know the person who, who said it took me like, how do they apply to be a big thing? It took me like ninety seconds to to really process what was what was going on here. So yes, I have created the application. I will be posting the link in my bio in all of the Rush Vibes um social media. You too can be a big thinker. Uh, along with the vibe tribe um so yeah so i think i ask about like tacos and your preference to tacos where do you like to travel so we can determine what destinations we can do our long big thinking weekends um i think i asked like your your spirits preference um it also your beer preference and it's just you know and, and just some big you know, there are some philosophical thoughts um that I, I do ask, I do touch on, um, and you know, just your spiritual, you know, what, what, what are your, what are your spiritual preferences? So that is coming for those who inquired. Um, so please I be want, ready to I apply. Want their, I want their names. <laughs> please be ready to apply. I want to know anyway, where they live. Um, who, I did. Who their mama is. <laughs> I want to know all. I did all the- want to discuss a few things. So, you know, there was a thread conversation on one of our posts on Facebook and, you know, someone had said something along the lines of, you know, it shouldn't be expected that your spouse should be there, like should be the person you go to for everything. So one, I wanted to clarify, I am not a stalker wife. Um, he's lying. He wishes I, he wishes I was a stalker wife. I am usually half the time not concerned with what he's doing. (laughs) Um, you know, we've had seasons where I was traveling a lot, seasons where he was traveling a lot. Uh, so, you know, we're used to being apart. I, I grew up in a house where, you know, my dad traveled. So, you know, I'm, I'm, that's just what I know. So I, I, would not classify myself as a stalker wife. I definitely support my husband having friends. Um, I male friends, big thinker friends, male straight friends. Um, no, you can, you need a, you could, you always got to sprinkle some, some gay friends in there because they keep you. Fresh. No, I have, I have, yeah, I know you do. I have some. Uh, they keep, they, they keep you fat. They just, they're just good to have. You have to have diverse, diverse friends. Personally, I prefer them to be male. Um, but I do encourage him to have friends because he's definitely like a loner. Um, he's definitely, you are. 
you can, you can, you can <laughs> making me sound face. like just so. He, <laughs> and, and he's very much a homebody. So I do appreciate like anyone who is not me that can get him out of his comfort zone, that can get him out and about and doing stuff. Um, that person still doesn't really. There are still there are people in his life that you know they they socialized him more, uh, and I do appreciate them him for that. So I did want to emphasize that because I think in my you know sometimes I go on my reckless tangents and I you know I can be an extreme extremist but i didn't want to come off as we have the type of house where it's like it's only us um i don't really have anyone that I, like aside from david that i classify as like my best friend there's no one i'm gonna be like oh this is my so, bestie so what exactly are you clarifying i'm clarifying that i'm not a stalker wife i don't want okay. you thinking that i'm a stalker wife okay. and that i expect him to come to me from for everything so the well, I, I think to be fair um i think uh it, it was if if that was the perception you gave off, I think it was a little unfair because we were we were act, asking we were talking about the topic in the context of why Bill would need to spend Bill Gates mm -hmm. would need to spend a weekend with his ex wife with his ex girlfriend, not because he I'm assuming not because he was you know trying to do you know trying to see what was up with the what's Dipping up, but um, you know that he could get something philosophically. Um, maybe business minded, business oriented from his ex that he couldn't get from Melinda. Mm -hmm. That was reading the articles that I read, doing the research that I did. That's the impression that I got. So it it, it was more so in the context of if you're so against him spending time with his ex, are you expecting him to? If are you expecting your spouse, if you don't want them to spend time with their ex for any reason? Are you expecting them to have to come to you for the things that they would get from them on a philosophical business? And so that's kind of why the, the topic came up. So um, I just felt like adding a little bit of context. Context. I yeah. appreciate you contextualizing this statement no that problem. I'm making. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So, yeah, I wanted to clarify that. Um, I definitely do support you. And no one came for me. Like, I actually got a few, like, fans. People were like, I'm I'm here for all things Jess. And you know what? I love and appreciate you. I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for my, um, my fan. You got to get reckless like me. Just need but one. I did, Just like, one. I, I, do, I do support him having, you know, you know, connection of the minds. I think one thing that, tri that was definitely a triggering topic, um just reflecting on situations I've been in in the past and, you know, being told that you like someone needs to reference someone else when it's, when you feel like you are capable. So I will say that I won't say I came from like a place of hurt, but I did come from a place of, you know, channeling back a young Jess who felt that she was being seen as insignificant or like her opinion or her knowledge on a certain subject matter wasn't there. So that's why I was like, look, Melinda, I don't know what y'all were doing in your marriage, but y'all were tripping. That's why you need some black girlfriends who could have held you down and been like, look, chick, if you don't let this happen, we're going to rent the house next door. That's what I said. That's what I stand by. Um, she needed some black friends. So I hope she gets that um, in this next relationship or whatever venture season she goes. But I do support David having, you know, we do have different interests. Uh, but there were some comments that we got. Some people did say, like, you know, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be expected that you should go to your spouse for everything that should be overwhelming. And I, I personally disagreed with that. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Because you know who left that comment? Your, your mom says something like that. Yeah. And then somebody else. So I you, can't, can't, you can't, you can't, yeah, I can disagree no, with you your can't mom. Disagree with my There's mom. actually several things I disagree with your mom about. Okay. So what we're not going to do. You brought part her two. up. Cause I didn't even say who. Part two. What we're not going to do. I didn't do even say who. For the second episode in a row. So if you're trying to what protect your well, mom's honor, you didn't even have to drop her name. What we're not going to do. What you, you dropped her name. Let's bring my mother into this. Look, ma, sh he brought you up. I didn't even say, I just said uh, someone he, he, in the comments. Needs, she's back to being a daughter-in-law, not a daughter. She's no longer a daughter in love. She has to earn that, that title back. I done, I done given her the, all the granddaughters she, her heart could desire. I, I hold my status, but you know, she and someone, I can't remember who else was uh, responding to her and they were just kind of like, no, I disagree with that personally because I, now I'm not saying we need to be interested in all the same things, which I believe was, you know, one of the sentences in the comment. Um, but I do believe that if you are my spouse and I can't come to you for everything, then what's the point? 
you know, there are like I should. What's the point of what? What was the point of us being together? If there, if there's something that I'm dealing with or something that I I have a thought about, I should even if it's not like you'll come to you'll start talking to me about stuff, and I'm like I don't know what what you're talking about. But sometimes it's not necessarily a matter of you need me to give you a response in relation to the topic that gives clarity. Sometimes it's just I need a bouncing board. I just need to be able to speak to some like to someone so that I can process the thought. Like there are a lot of times I'll be like, "Hey David, what do you think about?" and I just start spewing at the mouth and you and you're not responding because I don't need you to respond. Be on autopilot. <laughs> yeah, he's not actually listening. Um he's just he's I'll be just, like, "Damn, that's crazy." <laughs> My bad. He's just listening or <laughs> allegedly listening to what I'm saying. And then yeah, yeah. through that, I'm able uh, to process oh, what I'm trying to figure out. So I do think, and I think, and I can't remember who was responding. You know, they had said, you know, sometimes your spouse can't handle what you're, you're dealing with. But, you know, I think that comes with the partnership of marriage. Uh, you know, if you marry someone who becomes president, you have to deal like, you have to deal with a lot of the stressors that they're dealing with because that's coming into the home. So, you know, I did disagree with that. Like there are some shows you watch that I'm not like you put on some, sometimes you put on this like thug music. I'd be like clutching my pearls and I'm like, look, um, so my holy and sanctified ears can't handle this. I need you to put on kids, Bob, or, you know, just something. Ma'am. I just need early Ma'am. thousands Ma'am. pop. Ma'am. What? What do I listen you're Christian, to? You're Christian what? Sanctified. Weren't you talking about dick pics like two episodes ago? I was, but yeah, it was dick right. pics of a pastor. <laughs> so. I don't know if that makes it better or I, worse. But I mean, I feel like the fact that there's a pastoral covering <laughs> that, is, um, that creates uh, just a sanctified protection for my ears. But anyway, so I, I do think that your spouse is supposed to be the person you can go to for everything. Even if you're in different fields, you you cover like you talk to me about some work stuff, and I'm like I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the ins and outs. Like even your last job, I didn't know any. Like I knew the 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 acronyms to drop, and I knew the words like to strategically put in conversations, but I could never actually do what you do. But I would always be able to be a sounding board for you. So if you had an interesting day, like previously or in your current job, I can I know enough of the jargon that I can follow what you're dealing with. So I don't personally agree with you know you can't go to your spouse for anything i am one who does believe that before you go to anyone you should clarify if they have the mental capacity to handle whatever you're throwing at them so you know sometimes if i'm going to a girlfriend about something like i'm just overwhelmed about stuff i'll be like hey sis you have the capacity like the mental capacity why would you go to your girlfriend and not me because sometimes it's something about you. Time out. 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 All right. Time out. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Time out. Are you supposed to do this for 30 seconds? No, it's just, you know, you got until you get the ref's attention. You know, you got a 30 second. It was so funny. My old high school basketball coach, God rest his soul. Uh, he used to call 30 second timeouts and he would go like this. <laughs> He'd be like, if we, get, if we get a 30 second timeout, this, this is, but anyways, um, you said you should be able to go to your spouse for, you should be mm-hmm. able to go to your spouse for anything. Yeah. And yet you just said, if you need to go to a girlfriend for something, why wouldn't you just come to me? Sometimes I do come to you and you just, you, no, no, no. You're like, you're oh man, already. that's crazy. So then I, <laughs> no, I say, damn, that's damn, cra- that's crazy. Damn, so that's then crazy. I got to go to somebody else who's <laughs> actually going to listen to me. But yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's a contradiction of which everything you just said. Well, sometimes. No, oh, sometimes. Are we moving? Are, is that is that a goalpost moving? No. Is, is somebody moving a goalpost? No, it's there? me moving the player. Oh, okay. This is a goalpost. Goalpost stays. Is that a ba- is that, I'm moving is that the a player. Pedal. All I'm saying is sometimes you got your, you got your shoes on. Like you're MJ? not. You're not. You're you not a mom. Walk? You're not a woman. No, I'm not. You I, don't I never claimed. I never, like there never are things that I'm to. dealing with that you never claimed to. But you took. But you I took, also said that, you took the some, that I support you going to other people. You took the position so that you disagreed I, with my mother. <laughs> yes. That you that you should be able to go to your spouse yes, for everything. Yes, and anything that I go to someone else about, I've either already come to you or I'm a, going to, I see them as, you're adding stuff as in wise here. counsel. No, you're... 
This is my asterisk. I'm human. I'm allowed an asterisk. Go to the bottom, the footnotes, the tiny font that you can't see unless Yo. you have really good eyes. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's just I want to make sure I articulate things correctly because you are very literal most men are very literal and sometimes if i have I feel like that's a generalization it is a generalization because y'all are real like it's real e- easy to mm. blanket you guys um it's despicable didn't y'all just start washing your legs like isn't that first the of all don't no, no man there's no y'all with that i've always washed my legs i don't know why this is a David thing told me about an article he read that no nah, it's, it's twitter don't wash their it's legs on twitter and apparently dudes don't wash their legs that's a lot of buildup of bacteria that's y'all nasty because i wash everything i feel like that's how you get gingivitis granted right. gingivitis everything. is a sickness of, like of the mouth and oral sickness i feel like you could get it on your legs if you're not scrubbing leg, and then you guys leg, don't shave leg, your leg gingivitis yeah you guys don't sh- like men don't shave their leg hair so it's like no. that's well, a some lot of, of some men do oh that's I'm a not, lot I'm of I'm I'm a couple of men who shave their legs interesting I don't mind a a smooth leg man. But anyway, sometimes I'll go to a girlfriend just to make sure I'm going to articulate it right or that my feelings are not extreme. Because I'm a woman. I am human. I roar. And I recognize that sometimes I can get... Y'all have seen that. I get reckless. Like I I just say stuff off the cuff. Sometimes he edits it out, and I feel like that's just unfortunate. But... I so I I'm just spew. You. I'm protecting, he's protecting you from me. yourself. I just spew at the mouth. So I really sometimes just reference another woman who you know may have already been through a situation that I'm dealing with, just to make sure I'm being rational. Like, is, is this a rational thought? So I don't dispute having people in your corner that aren't your spouse that you can reference that you can get advice from. I think all I was really trying to emphasize is there shouldn't be one person that is held at such a high esteem that within your marriage, one you're asking for approval. Like who's this basic? Well, I I think it's safe to say that, you know, it was a fun topic and it was interesting question Mm -hmm. to throw out there, but I I think we know that there's a very small percentage of marriages in this country or maybe even in the world. Although I don't, I can't speak for the culture, so I don't want to be ignorant. Um, But at least in America that that would even be a consideration. True. So, but just in case people try and get buck, like look at Bill. He has extended weekends, and he's a billionaire. Like, I know someone's going to try and and and, and drop that. Um, that's the not difference between work. me and Bill is you know a few few zeros. That's it. He's a billionaire. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so yes, I, 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 I just want I, I just <laughs> want to clarify. <laughs> I I do support my husband having friends and other people who are like minded of him. Uh, to be able to bounce ideas. I do also hold the expectation that he can come to me as well and that I hope that I make myself available. Sometimes I'm just like not in the mood and that's when he always wants to be like talking. Like like whenever like the kids finally go to sleep and I'm like, oh, I got a moment to myself. And now this joker wants to come. She put up this Facebook post that was like, it was a few weeks ago uh, when you were like, when Savi's down for her nap literally david coming in it was a picture of the mom who was like sitting on the couch like and then the little girl in the middle of the door with her hands up trying to talk to her so disrespectful yeah but that's him like that's him and that's solace my, i just want to like, talk to my wife sometimes anytime wanna, i have that moment it. and i'm like whoo i have the moment to myself that's when these people just want to come just just talking yeah. Can you text me? So, so so I do recognize that sometimes I, I am unavailable, but that's just because I need a moment. But I do support it. I still don't support exes, um, and I'm ready to defend my point as to why I don't support exes um, and extent. Like, w- I feel like an ex so, should be in the so, past so, unless so, so, you so, have so, children so, 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 with so, 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 them. Wait, wait, wait. Let, me get, let, me get, let me get 30. Let me get 30 second time out. Um, so I... Here you are going to cut me off. No, I just want to, I just want to rebut before you, you go okay. on to the next thing. Right. Um, so it's like I said, last episode, I said, there is a difference between as your spouse, as your partner, as the father of your children, knowing that there is something going on with you. There is something you're dealing with. There is something you're battling. There is something that's affecting your mental or your emotional health. And then there's a difference between me being the one to, help see you through it 
Now, it would be in an ideal world, yes, I could solve every single problem that you ever have. If, if it were up to me, then yeah, you would need to have a friend or consult anybody outside of this house because I'd just be able to button up all your problems. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is, is that I can't, and you can't. There are other people who are better suited to help us through certain storms and, and certain lulls and certain valleys in our lives than the person who we're married to. And that's, that's not all the time, but it is, there are certain times where you're not the best person to help me figure out what the problem, what the solution to my problem is. Mm -hmm. Now I will tell you that I have a problem because you need to know what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will definitely get your opinion on the problem, but you may not be the one to actually help to give me what I need to get through it. Mm -hmm. Like we talk, like Christians talk all the time. Like you never know who God's going to send your way to, to bless you or to help you do something. And it may not always be, the, it may not always come in the form that you're looking for or the form that you're most familiar with. It may be something out of left field. Um, we are, our five-year-old's kindergarten teacher, I don't know if this is if this is fair to say or not, but I mean, we'll say it anyway, has said how our daughter has just by being young and innocent, you know, helped her through certain instances, help, helped her through certain things that she was dealing with just by being who she is. So you never really know mm -hmm. um, what form the help is going to come and what form the help is going to come. But it doesn't always have to be your spouse. Just because you're my spouse doesn't mm -hmm. mean, you know, there's, there's just like a obligation that no I have Jessica has to be the one to to help me do this because I put a ring on her finger I don't think that that's I don't think that's fair it's not it wouldn't be fair to either person mm -hmm. honestly because you're you're putting your ability to to heal to to get help like you're confining it to a certain space mm -hmm. and I, I don't think that that's that's fair to anybody so you should definitely be able to let your partner know that yeah something's up you know I, I gotta figure something yeah. out um, but hey, I'm going to talk to this person because they have experience in this feed this business field, or they dealt with this emotional thing, or they lost somebody before. So I'm going to I'm going to go to them. So you know, it's just it just depends on on the situation. But I, I don't think there's any one like cookie cutter uh, resolution for 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 problems people are dealing with. So I think we need to keep options open. In terms of who we who we go, to, it's the it's the platinum. Sorry, uh, who we go to and and how we get things resolved. So that was my that was my rebut. Damn, that's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> so I do agree with so you. I'll play this back just I, in case you weren't listening. I'll play it back. <laughs> I do agree recording. with you, but I still stand on the 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 premise that you should be able to go to your spouse with everything. Well, you're wrong. Not not with the expectation that they can solve your problems but the simple fact that this is the person that I've committed myself to for the remainder of my life. So I should be able to come tell, to you tell them. and confide yes. with you and sure. be vulnerable with you. Sure. Um, I will say, cause you mentioned, you know, God sends, you know, different people. Um, my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob would not send an ex. You have no, you know, Ooh, 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 <laughs> Ooh. Would not send an ex while I'm Ooh. under the covenant of marriage Ooh. to solve a problem. That's what I'm. That's just what I'm gonna say. What what chapter is it? What what what, it's, what, it's uh, what book is that in? The book of this marriage going to work without exes involved. Oh, man, that must be the one the Vatican still got locked down. You, you know what How'd it you is. See it? Tom Tom Hanks didn't get Tom it. Hanks. He got a glimpse. <laughs> But he didn't get it. He had, he had a glimpse. So wow. I know it's in there. You're wild. I know it's in there. Um, I'm telling you, I'm what Mac, Michael Rappaport said to the van. You're bugging. <laughs> bugging. You're bugging. Um, that's that's just where I stand. But I do I do think the the importance of marriage is being married to someone that you can go to with all of your issues. Um, sometimes you need more time to develop your thoughts. Like me, I don't like. If he recognizes I have a problem, he tries to come at me and is all like, yo, what's, yo, what's the problem? What can so, I do? Uh, uh, and I'm like, so I need to process my thoughts and my feelings before I can come to you so because I, you're going to try and resolve it or give me advice that I'm not necessarily so ready quick, for. Quick, quick interruption. Um, 30 seconds. I actually have been very intentional about not jumping into the phone booth whenever I notice that something is, is bothering you. That used to be something that, no, I, I definitely was horrible at. It was like, oh man, Jessica's down. 
it's time, <laughs> you know, and try to and and and, and try to you know, s- you know swoop in and save the day. And not one, not every situation calls for that. Uh, and two, like you said, sometimes just knowing your partner helps, and that it takes Jessica a long time to sort out how she feels about something. She'll she'll get her initial, you know, feelings about something, but then which is the danger it, zone? It takes it takes her some time to actually think through it and, and figure out exactly how she feels and then how she wants to express those feelings. So as you know, we're, we're basically seven years in marriage. Um, it's just been a process for me to understand like, Hey, you know, you need to be a little bit more, um, judicial with how you, you know, when you try to, you know, how hard you basically, you know, you lean in, do you lean in hard or do you kind of take a wait and see approach and let her kind of, uh, kind of set the table. So that's something that I'm working on, but no, you're absolutely right. That's my, my first instinct, even, even now it's just to jump in and, and see, you know, what I can, how, how much, how quickly I can fix everything and make her feel better. But the reality is, it's just, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So I, you wanted to talk about exes, something about exes. Uh, I want you to be able to do that uninterrupted. So let's take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk about exes and relationship vibes part two. We back. We back. So. And we back. I almost And we did back. That. And we back. And we back. Because I don't know all the words, but I can still vibe with it. Um, and Chance, um, people don't really like Chance no more. Isn't huh? that crazy? You it's don't like Chance anymore? People don't really rock with Chance. No I more. love Chance. I mean, I like Only Chance. thing I don't like about Chance is like he introduces himself like DJ Khaled, but it's always like a question. Chance, the rapper. So then I'm like, is there another chance I'm supposed to know about? Because he's clarifying like in a question um, that anytime I hear a chance, the rapper song, like he's on um, that Bieber song and chance the rapper. And I feel like that's yeah. how he does it. Like he, 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 he questioned it. So then I'm like, OK, maybe I need to look up some other chances and, and figure out, you know, like chance, the politician chance, the preacher chance. The teacher? Anyway, um, so back to part two of exes and why I am a proponent of canceling exes like a bad TV show. So sometimes it works out to keep an ex in your life. Like like this guy is actually an ex several times removed. Twice. Twice. Um, twice removed. It was only twice? I feel like it was way more than twice. Two, three, four, five, you know. It's at least four times that we we had broken up. And I have always been, like, he was like, I still think that we can be friends. And I'd roll my eyes. And I I can't even remember which girlfriend it was. But I'd be like, look, friend. Look, dude. Like, you couldn't even be my boyfriend and you think we can be friends. Like, I would be annoyed at the fact that you make a better friend than boyfriend. So why am I I trying to be your friend? Uh, But he wouldn't go away. Uh, And here we are, seven years later, the entrapped entanglement. (laughs) Of why it is important to get rid of your ex. <laughs> but the point that I want to make is there, there are always, I feel like there are very few situations where you have an ex and, or someone that you had previous feelings for that those feelings can go 100% away. I feel like in the back of your mind, you always wonder like, oh, you know, now that I've matured, I can probably, like, we could probably make it work because I'm a better adult or whatever. Like you, you think, you think that you're wiser and you're not like, you're still, we're still stupid for that person. So I bring this up. Why I don't support commingling of exes because we are currently in a season where it is alleged that after a 17 year gap, I'm talking other relationships, marriage, children. We have a couple that has chosen to rekindle allegedly their relationship and that's why i will stand firm and say no exes drake said no new friends i say no exes because j-lo and ben affleck and i have a weird nostalgia for their relationship because 
Like it was, it was the relationship I knew. It was like after Diddy and the whole shooting fiasco at what was it an award ceremony when she wore the little dress, the, the dress that like everything it was just like the little bow, but everything was out and she J loaded it like she J loaded the dress. She looked amazing in it. And people came for her, but she looked amazing. Like J like J Lo just holds the foundation of of amazingness except when she tries to bite after beyonce and it's just kind of like come on j-lo like be an original anyway she's 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 always going to be my selena but 17 years later like ben found himself another gen so he still carried on the benefer had kids j-lo went from ben I feel like there might have been someone in there. And then Mark Anthony had her twins and then A-Rod. And now look at them. They're in Montana. They're, they've gone to Big Sky. Big Sky. Mind you, it's the same resort. You had your hand all up in my section, so it's, it's your turn. No, uh, yes, you did. Because I remember looking and I was like, I should say something, but I'm not going to be petty. But since you want to be petty, we can get petty. Um, That's terrible. I'm only going to Montana for somebody I love. Because there ain't people that hear, look like me Mo- in Montana. Know, Montana's really nice. It's supposed to be gorgeous. Yeah. But, one, I watch the show Big Sky. And two, it's Montana. I know yeah, the that's demographic. Fiction. No, that's fiction, right? It is. But it's based, isn't it like based off a book? I know the demographic the of people who look like me are not high in Montana. So, I, I'm only going to Montana. You don't know that. For lo- there are not a lot of black people in Montana. And I feel like there also are not a lot of Latinos because that's just, that's like my my follow up minority group, and then Asians. So like that's how I determine if a space is safe for me to be in. Are there black people? No. Okay. What about my cousins? My my Latinx cousins? Are y'all are y'all out in these streets? Y'all aren't there. Okay. What about my Asian second cousins? What y'all doing? Y'all ain't there either. Mm-mm, not gonna play with What's it. What's the um, alcohol percentage in this, in this <laughs> wine that you're drinking? I'm just speaking truth. I'm speaking. That's how I gauge. That's how I gauge things. Which racial relative is in close proximity? So I'm not going to Big Sky, but J Lo was out there waiting for tonight in Big Sky. So the point I'm trying to make is 17 years later. 17. That's a whole academic career getting ready to graduate and go to college. So that's a long time. That's a long time. It's a very long time. And look at them now. Sending emails back and forth. He's over there riding in her white SUV, getting dropped off, throwing drinks at paparazzi. And now they're in Montana. Big Sky. Why is it called Big Sky? There's Big Sky everywhere. We got the same sky. Anyway, so the point I want to make, I want to emphasize is that the emotional connection to an ex unless this is like a middle school ex like that you dated for all of enough days and then told people you were moving so that you could break up with them and then date somebody else only to not move and be back to school on monday i feel i feel like you didn't catch that did you you didn't catch all the shade I threw I you. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> all about. All the shade I threw you. I can't remember which episode it was that David told this this story of how he tried to break up with a girl so, by saying he was moving only to return to this school. is This was middle school, by the way. I want y'all to think that this was like last year. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was middle school. It was not my, not my finest moment. Um, We'll have to figure out what episode and let you go back and hear the story yourself. Yeah, I I can't remember. It was early. It was one of the earlier episodes. It was. But the point Um, I want to make is that that emo, like when you emotionally. I don't appreciate that shit. The shit. I was, I was in there and I was gauging your facial expression to see if you were, if you were going to recognize that I was, I was coming for you. Be your own people. Uh, Of course it does. I just feel like if you have emotional, if you have had emotional investment with someone. What's the problem? Her and her and, and Ben getting back together. I mean, nothing. But if she and Ben so had you... been hanging out while she would like, if they were big thinking in Big Sky, um, people like now you'd look back and be like, oh, there was always feelings there. I mean, it's kind of like the picture that circulated when it was she was married to Mark Anthony and then like they were taking a group shot with A Rod and then she ends up engaged to A Rod. So I'm just I, I I'm just saying I just feel like 
Gotta keep X's. that grass cut. <laughs> gotta keep the grass cut low. X's, X's are dangerous because it's like, it it's a closed door, but it's not locked. And you can always bring back that emotion. So going back to Bill and Melinda, I feel like a part of why he wanted those extended weekends and I don't know who, we don't know the whole truth of it, who offered it, who, if Melinda like woke up one day and was like, look, you're bothering me, go, you know, once a year, I doubt it, but it's, me, pos it's possible, go have a weekend with her or whatever it was, whatever it attracted to you to that person is not, it's not going to go away. So if it, for that ex, in my opinion, if it was, and I'm emphasizing my opinion, cause I know he's going to try and come for me, but for that ex, if it was, you know, her intellect that appealed to him, now he's having extended time with her because of her intellect. Like that keeps the attraction going. If, if it's someone's musical ability, like say, you know, you work in music and your ex is a singer and it's, you know, her, their vocal, the way they're able to, you know, spit lyrics, whatever they're doing, um, that's always going to be like a reminder. Like they might be crazy and be like, yo, that person was crazy. But when they get into that zone and you're reminded of what it was that attracted you to them, like that that brings something back so that's why i'm a proponent from stay for staying away from your ex like bye it's, it's a lesson you were with them you learned if you don't end up marrying them like bye 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 you can send like wedding gifts and baby shower gifts um and gift cards but like you don't need to be coming up in the So house. you're just you're just anti X. Yeah. Period. X. X con. No. Or if there are kids Alex. involved. If they're kids, that's a whole different scenario. Okay. But even so, it's still it's still touchy. You're not gonna be doing extended weekends with your baby mama. No, I'm just I'm just saying in terms of just overall, you're saying you don't want any X's involved. Yeah, in but your... I'm I'm basing this off of a perfect X clean ex situation where there's no there should be no additional um connectors when you throw children into the situation that can go twofold like sometimes it's peaceful it's amicable like you go live your life i live my life and it's only the child that connects us and sometimes you got like it's ugly it's ratchet you got people you know fighting and throwing hands and not holy hands um and then you got one person who still feels for the other but you know someone else has moved on and you know it's just my baby whatever um but i be in i be in the ratchet news I know people be slipping up with their baby mamas, baby's daddy, baby. That it happens because they are reminded of what attracted them to that person. Attraction is powerful. It's like witchcraft. I'm not lying. It is. It'd be like a spell. So again, I ask how much. I'm, 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 just, I'm just speaking my truth. This is my you opinionated know, your, truth. You know, your your fit matches your your drink. I know. I'm coordinating my lips. Coordinating. Yeah, I know the whole the whole thing. The whole MTV, in the hair and the TV generation and the the fingernail. Yeah. Kind of sort of. Not really. Yeah, not really. Um, Sorry. That's just my opinion. Now there are plenty. I I know people. There are plenty of people who they have, and I can't speak. I don't have an ex that I have children with. Um, but there are plenty of people who, why are you, do you have an ex? You no, I'm just making sure. I'm just wanting to make, I just want to make absolutely sure. I feel sure. like you would know. Um, so I, I can't speak on that. And I know there are some people who will be like, look, I want absolutely nothing to do with my baby daddy. And I, trust me, I believe you. I seen, I seen, and, and I seen it. I seen it. And I know there are some people like, I want nothing to do with my baby mama. I've, I've seen it, but I've also seen it. People who are like, I'm hoping this new guy she's with just doesn't work out. So maybe we can try again because I've matured Thanks, and I've Steve learned Harvey. some things. So, you know, I, I just feel like everything Stephanie, is a double edged Stephanie sword. Stephanie Harvey over here. I will never dispute the exception to the rules that I make up um, because I know that my rules are extreme. Um, but this is my opinionated truth. I'm not saying it's the truth. I'm saying it's my it's it's the truth covered in my opinion. It's my opinionated truth. But opinions are capable of being changed. 
you know, you get exposed to different things, exposed to different situations, and, you know, you change your opinion. It's easy to go back to an ex because this person already know, like, they know you. Depending on how long you were together, they know your quirks, they know your, your ins and outs, they know your preferences, your preferences. And, you know, it's sometimes it's easier for someone who already knows your preferences as opposed to now I got to go teach someone my preferences and then like you know some we human we adults here I hope everybody's an adult please be 18 and up um so I I recognize I recognize these things I do but because I recognize these things I'm willing to give you my opinionated truth and say keep your ex out your relationship unless there is a significant reason to be connected. So now J Lo stuck with A Rod because they done made all these business things together. Um, what the, what's the, like they got into all these businesses and then called off the engagement. So now she's stuck. So now Ben is if they get back together. So it's just all of these entanglements. It's messy. It is messy. It's very it messy. Is so messy. But whoever she. Whoever she moved on to next, because J Lo would you know have had saying? would have had to deal with this. Would have had to deal with it regardless. But this is an old flame. But it doesn't matter. Like you're saying, they now Ben has to deal with like the fact that she has business dealings with A Rod. Mm-hmm. Like whoever she would have ended up dating next would have had to deal with that. Yeah, but it doesn't now, matter what, what makes A-Rod it different. A Rod already feels a type of way because he's like, "Oh, this happened kind of quick." And I'm like, "A Rod, please have several seats in the nosebleeds because weren't you having an emotional affair with some girl from a southern reality show?" So stop. Um, Wait, an emotional affair? Yeah. What's how do you? An emotional affair is when you don't go to your spouse about things that you're dealing with, but you go to someone else and then you confide in that person and they confide back in you and they become your emotional support person, which is why you need to go to your spouse for everything. Do you guys see how this is all interconnected and it all comes back to my opinionated truth? Do you see? So talking to someone is having an emotional yes, you affair? Have an emotion, you can have physical affairs. Where you know you having physical, you know you getting it, you dipping preferences, pref- preferences. They know your pre- you don't taught them your preferences, so now everybody knows your preferences. But then emotional affairs, it's not physical, but you have started to, you know, first it starts as a friendship, and you're big thinking together. And like I said last week, you know, your your significant other, you know, starts tripping, and so you know you tell them like I can't believe he's doing this, or I can't believe she's doing that, and then you know they try to give you that advice where it's like, oh, you know, just be patient with them. No. You're lying. You're trying to seem like the supportive person. It goes twofold. Where they're like, oh, just be patient with them. You know, we're all human, blah, 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 blah. I got your back. But then they also be like, you know what? You're too good for them. I don't even know why you settled for them. Like, you're too beautiful. You have too much money. Like, you do blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, you know what? You're right. Like, thank you so much for just being there for me. All And it's like, yes, friend, always. I'm here for you. No matter what time of day, I got you. It's the I got you. I got you is dangerous. But yes, this is how entanglements this is exactly how, ent- like, listen to Jada. This is how entanglements start. You saw how, what happened to Will? You saw the look on his face. I'm speaking some, op- I'm dropping some opinionated knowledge. Like, forget Derek Jackson over here. Y'all need to be, y'all need, I'm about to write a book and self-edit and put it on Amazon. Because I need y'all to understand the seriousness of what I'm saying. This is how it happens. Jada was supposed to be all like mama figure and supportive friend to to August and, and August needed somebody. And then before you know it, they don't entangle their legs in somebody's 20,000 square foot house. You going to say something? Is that is that all? I'm sure there's more, but sometimes some, this is me pausing. I'm getting ready to bounce more ideas off of you. <laughs> I um you know, here on here on the Jessica Rushing podcast. <laughs> I'm uh, just talking I'm just, because nobody is stopping me, I'm just, which I'm is just nice. Gra- I'm just grateful that, you know, I, I I'm been able to like listen in, like in person to this this podcast. My live studio audience. <laughs> Your live live studio audience. I told y'all I'm reckless. I'm re- and at night it's just a different like a different energy comes about. It's true. Um so I, I'm more of a, 
you're an optimistic everybody that's good. actually exactly what i was gonna say skipping I'm, through I'm meadows like, we're Life all is good like glass. No, half, she wants you. Glass half full kind of kind of person. So I'm, I'm of the mindset that while I will agree that most exes need to just be that, like your ex, your past. There are mm. certain instances where the the people who were together realize they just didn't work, or maybe they work better as friends. And and that can be a non-threatening relationship, not dominant relationship, not predominant relationship, but just a non non-threatening relationship. Um, I don't think it always has to be like, no, you're banned for like forever from Look. from my life, Look. like just for for good you're, for you perpetuity. Don't Who, what? But no, I I I I I agree that most most exes need to just just stay that, but. Um, not every ex, not every, not every uh, ended relationship, you know, the, the people don't, aren't like just waiting for a moment to like get back together and share their, Sometimes prefer- it share, just their share their preferences. Sometimes it takes 17 years. <sighs> Personally, I was hoping I she'd get I don't back see, with I don't, I don't, I don't see an issue with, with her and Ben getting, uh, assuming, assuming it, it wasn't, they weren't you know, doing their thing while, <clears throat> while uh, she and a-, a Rod were together. But you know, they were on the outs for a while before it actually the news actually broke. Once the news mm-hmm. broke, it was reported that you know they had been feeling each other for a minute. So maybe they were just kind of separated, and then that's when she and Ben you know kind of reconnected. So he, yeah, I think Ben kind of reached out. Yeah. Like, so I mean, hey, that's, I'm here for you. They're always here for you. If you ever need anything. I need you to be there for me. That's what you I ever, need. I don't need you to be here. You ever I got need a shoulder, I need a shoulder, to to, shoulder to lean on. Yeah. It's always the, those ones. Um, I'm just speaking my opinionated truth. Yeah. I mean, if, if it happened within that window, I don't see anything flagrant about it. It's just, it is what, look, man. I will say that, that love and relationships. Yo, if if you are about a certain person and you want to be with that certain person, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a, it's a take no prisoners type type of mentality. You go for that person and you go get who you, who you want to be with and you fight for your relationship. So maybe Ben saw an opportunity and he was like, you know what? I really do have, I really did have feelings for JLo. I really messed up here. I messed up there. I'm old, 17 years older now. And I realize I look at things a little differently I think that she could compliment me and, and who I am, where I am in my life, a lot better. I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for, go for gold. Okay. You know, you and you said you and I broke up. You broke up with me <laughs> <laughs> several times, and yet here I sit. Mm-hmm. Your king. Mm-hmm. Your heartthrob. The object of your thirst. <laughs> Me. Uh, and here I sit. Because I was like, yo, that's gonna be my that's gonna be my wife. She may not know it. <laughs> 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 but she will. She will one day. And sure enough, here we sit. Two kids later. Mm-hmm. A marriage, a house, two kids later. Seven years. No exes involved. Well. No exes involved. Um, mm. So, mm. you know, when you, when you, but I guess it is in, in our culture, American culture, American, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe humans, human beings as a species, mm-hmm. um, the male tends to be, you know, the pursuer or yeah. dominant. That's how it is for me. Uh, <laughs> Um, I ain't here to chase no dude. So you know, I have standards. Go, go get what you, go get what you want to get. Do I mean try to do it respectfully and ethically? But no, don't try. Do it respectfully and ethically. I'm just saying. I'm maybe it's easy for me to say this because I I, I don't I don't date. I don't have to worry about it. But um, I knew at a certain point who I wanted to be with, um, and I knew it, I didn't need to look around and, and test waters. So uh, when I realized that, 
I realized there are certain things I needed to do to make myself prepared to only be with one person for the rest of my life. And I, and I did it and I made it known that I wasn't going anywhere. Not in like a, a creeper, like stalking, you know, pressed up against the bedroom window or like, yeah. well, it's thunderstorming. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not what I did, but I let her know like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna be right here. <laughs> yeah, I just got tired. Yeah. So, was, sorry. So, um, yeah, that's what it is. But I, I'm not, a, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a negative to have exes around or to be able to, to still be cordial or friendly with your ex as long as everybody knows what the boundaries are right? and you got to set those and you got to mm-hmm. abide by them boundaries um but not everybody does that mm-hmm. so but yeah and that's ba- us that's boundaries us tend to be fluid for some that's people. us that's our our marriage our relationship and not everybody is like us and that's fine but um you know i would be depending on the ex i would be more than more than okay with Jessica speaking to them or like she said last episode, getting coffee with her location on <laughs> and with me in the back of the, me in the back of the coffee shop with my, with my newspaper creeping up over the, the brim of the paper. Nah, I mean, I, I would be, I would be just, I would be fine with it. Um, because I'm, like I said, I'm older now. Um, I'm very secure in, in who I am and who I married and uh, what we have. So, you know, I, I don't really, I don't feel threatened, so to speak. And maybe that's maybe that's not a good thing. But at the same time, I'm not someone who is content in terms of where I am in my my relationship and my marriage and who I am as a man. So I always try to get better. So it's not it's not like me being complacent. Um, it's just I trust my wife and I know my wife. So you know what I don't trust the devil and he in the details and I don't give him any he stay busy so I don't give him any opportunity to slither his little serpentine self into any situation so no I ain't talking to you I'm a block you. Um, I'm a unfollow you I'm a unfriend you that's actually what I do when I the one x maybe 1.5 x's I have um blocked change my phone number I don't give opportunity to Lucifer. That's where I stand. So no, should you? We're not getting coffee. We're not getting tea. We're not getting soda. We're not getting no beverages. That's where okay. I stand. That's my opinionated truth. I'm coining that term. Because people be like, speak your truth. Speak your truth. But it, it, no. It's my opinionated truth. Okay. Um, anything else? No. That's it. Okay. Give me your feedback. Let me yeah. know about how you and your spouse and your ex and I'm your kids be that. frolicking in fields with sunflowers. I'm not speaking And anymore. how you have picnics and hang out and your ex babysits your kids and how life is grand and how you just bought a house on HGTV and you don't really have a real job. Um, just let me know. Let me know. Because there's always someone who's going to be the exception to my rule. So let's hear how your ex gave a kidney to your spouse and saved your spouse's life. So now you're okay. interconnected. Just, just let me know. Because I know there's someone who's going to be like, Jessica, you're such an extremist. And these things can happen. So I'm ready for it ready for it how your ex all right pulled so your that's uh that's from a burning building that's and- relationship vibes part two um and this is me cutting jessica off because she's she needs to go to bed and um we appreciate everybody tuning in like i said thank you for our two new subscribers on youtube thank you to everyone who's liked followed us on facebook and followed us on instagram um we are going to be introducing some live videos into our instagram and, and facebook we try to be a little bit more present uh, a little bit more you know uh, in your face uh, friend fan subscriber follower facing on social media so uh stay tuned for for that and, and keep an eye on your notifications make sure you're subscribed engaging to our notifications with our <laughs> engaging with our exes so uh we'll be back next week episodes every wednesday uh, as we normally do and um like i said just make sure you're connecting with us on social media and if you like the episode today and you've checked out maybe a couple other ones you know go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit the like button too 
just in case you liked it, helps to show up in the algorithm, helps us show up on suggested videos. Same thing for audio uh, podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, tune in. We're on all of them. Um, go ahead, give us uh, give us a, a like and leave a review. You know, if you're if you're feeling generous. So we're gonna go ahead and bring Jay Belk in. Hey Jay. Um, if you like this shirt, uh, shout out to 704 Shop here in here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Go ahead, get you a tea. Um, pretty dope, pretty comfortable too. So um, I'm not gonna do my my vaccine COVID bit because uh, all mandates have been lifted. So get outside, enjoy it. Stay safe. We love y'all. We'll see you guys next week. We out. Peace. Yeah, I can't wait to fuck. Stop me now.